Welcome back everyone to another episode of Brook in the Air. Um, today we are going over a very exciting and many might even say, I was trying to say something, but many might even say legendary aircraft. The McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing, F-4 Phantom II. Um, the original Phantom was a kind of a dud of an aircraft. It was a jet aircraft, but it was only off soft service for about three or four years. But this one, the McDonnell Douglas F-4, everyone should be reasonably accustomed to seeing. It's still in service but with a couple Allied missions to this day, especially Iran, but we'll get to that later. Um, basically, the uh, F-4, just towards the F-4, is a heavyweight fire bomber. But, um, and it was developed in the, designed and developed in the 1950s, but it earned its stripes in Vietnam. What I mean by that is that it was the perennial U.S. fighter bomber in Vietnam. And it was, generally speaking, where we learned what not to do for aerial warfare. Um, it was equipped with nine external hardpoints at its ultimate configuration. It's an addition with 11 external hardpoints, but yeah, that gave it a little too much to take off with. So it was shortened to 9. Um, it could carry 18,000 pounds of ordnance, which is about mm, almost two thirds the weight of the payload capability of the 17 Flame Fortress in Vietnam War II. Um, this particular F-4 that you're looking at here is from is over Holman Air Force Base in the very early 90s, just before it was shipped off to Desert Storm with the oh can't read the tone, but it's from Dice Air Force Base. But it was mine out to Holman Air Force Base at this point in time before it was transferred with the rest of the squadron to um Join Operation Desert Shield before the invasion of Iraq began in earnest. Now, um, the F-4 was, generally speaking, again, the fastest uh, fighter available at the time. However, Soviet fighters were by far faster, especially at higher altitudes, where there's, of course, less lift. One of the great things about the design of the F-4 is the fact that um, with the shape of the wings is sort of upward canted gull wings, almost gull wings, at, a, at about 5 degrees, generated a great angle of attack trajectory, and it could maneuver at high speeds at low altitude, which made it okay as a fighter bomber, but great as a reconnaissance plane. The RF-4 was unparalleled and unmatched as far as recon planes go um, in Vietnam. Um, it's the combination of its uplifted wings and the uh, uh, downward canted uh, tail fin. Superb. This is uh, Marine Fire Department 74 or VF 74 from the then in service USS Forestall. Um, after um, James Forestall, uh, Navy Admiral Turn Senator. Um, this was the um, RF 4. You can tell we have the ECM pod over here. And the lack of pylons for her points. And you know, as a Marine Corps variant, even without the VF on it, because of the white paint job, of course, and the, as you can see, tail hook over here. So, pretty clear right there. Um, the RF-4 pilots, or the reconnaissance version of the F-4, were brave beyond all recognition. Um, arguably braver than any combat pilot. They had to fly at a maximum height of 5,000 feet above base level, or above the deck, essentially in Jargon. Um, and they could only fly in straight level um, flight plans in order to get the best photographs available. Um, the cameras of the day forbid high maneuverability and high passes at a high altitude. 
the cameras just weren't as detailed and resolute as they, they ha as we have them today. Um, and when you're making low level passes over your Vietnam, essentially, things get a little hairy. Um, the motto of F4 pilots was, of course, speed is life. Now, that's great, but the thing is, as I alluded to earlier, at high altitudes, the MiG-21, its primary opponent, was arguably faster, especially at high altitudes. Now, at low altitudes, the F-4 could easily outrun the MiG, and if they couldn't outrun it, they could certainly outturn it, but they certainly could not outgun it, because the early F-4s, up until the F-4F and the F-4G, did not have any guns. They had a control gun pause later on, and that was it. Why didn't they have guns? Because of a litany of reasons, notably the Department of Defense under Defense Department Secretary Robert McNamara believed that um, the new wave of future warfare was high altitude dogfights would be a thing of the past and said they would shoot missiles at high altitude VTR or beyond visual range radar guided missiles. But didn't, how many missiles did they have? Four. Just four. So what happened when they ran out of all four missiles? The prevailing theory was that the F-4, once it ran out of missiles, would simply return to base to rearm. Return to base while being shot at? Mm -hmm. Doesn't, how are they supposed to defend themselves? Run away? Aha! Uh -huh. They defend themselves either by running away, turning and burning as the same went, um, or as Defense Secretary McNamara said, we rely on the skill of our pilots. So, especially in that part of the time, the skill of the pilots to be cowards. Yeah, or... Doesn't that go against a fighter ethos? Pretty much, yeah. Um, it wasn't until McNamara was pretty much out of the office, or had lost his influence, act his active influence, that we put gun pods on the fighters, which worked about as well as you expect, because we had no lean gun sights. So... How many pilots died before they put guns on? Hundreds. Before they went to POW games. Yeah, much like uh, the late Senator John McCain. Did he fly an F-4, or did he flew a Thunder Chief? Initially a Thunder Chief, although at the end of his career he flew an F-4. And he flew the F-4 before they had the D variant? Oh yeah. No, he flew F four Ds, but we he flew before we had the F four Gs. Oh, right, and it was Gs. G4Gs. Yeah. G for gun. Yes, because we're so inventive at making the variants. It wasn't until the new AN APG Q seventy three radar and SUU twenty three targeting tracking system was initiated and developed that we actually had a working leading gun sight that can actually lock onto a target with reasonable accuracy, enabling the pilots to fire their guns. Also, weren't they fighting against the MiG planes that basically just had guns? Two walking hands. And showing nothing. So it was four missiles versus how many rounds of ammunition and two guns? Does it really matter? Just curious. Uh, around two or three hundred rounds per cannon. So it's about 600 rounds total in each plane. So 600 to 800 rounds versus four missiles. And how accurate were the missiles? They had an accurate hit percentage rating of around 45 percent. So they basically had two missiles. Generally speaking, unless the pilot could figure out a way to lock on to a target with his missile and not miss. So two missiles versus 600 rounds. And that's assuming that the Soviet pilot or the Vietnamese pilot at the time used up his entire score of ammunition on one American pilot. Which didn't happen. Yeah. Alright, anyway. So we have a picture of MiG coming up here. Yeah. This is 
Which one is this? This is the F3 Human. This is the immediate predecessor to the F4. This is what the F4 is held from. And you can see a lot of similarities. The um, dual uh, J74 engines were simply upgrades of what the F3H had at the time. You can see the dual uh, jet intakes at the front, which were kept. The um, straight wings here were expanded and lifted upwards. And the downward canted uh, fin had yet to be developed here, but you can see where that would be developed. And the cockpit would be lengthened. But you can see general overall shape. So it started with the Derp Demon and then went to the Fast Phantom. Yeah, or as the pilot's called, the Pig. Alright. Next one? Next one. Here we have their initial uh, testing after they came out of uh, pre-production and were assigned to their first squadron. They were still undergoing testing at the time. These were the initial Phantoms, the, uh, the Batch 1. And here they are over their initial testing grounds off the coast of, I believe, California at the time. As you can see the, uh, the LA, well, LA, a uh, freighter docked at the um, shipyard at the time. So they're all equipped with um, two anti-ship missiles and two a few fuel tanks. So they're probably not a combat air patrol? Um, pricing combat air patrol. Mm. Missiles were not armed. Oh. Uh. It's getting used to the oh. uh, loadout, the weight. Now this is a um, mid-Vietnam variant of the F-4 during the height of their service. Um, they have uh, the uh, ECM mounted in the front, which is their only real modern quote-unquote defense against uh, any enemy missile lock-ons. The photo was taken from uh, a KC-135 Strata tanker. Um, this one, these were bomb variants, equipped with at least six GBU-12s. Gravity bombs. Gravity bombs. Yeah. So, dumb bombs. Oh yeah. The technical term is gravity bomb, but no one called it a gravity bomb. So this is before uh, laser guided? Uh, this is when the concept for laser guided when it was invented, but they hadn't actually come up with laser guided munitions yet. And in regards to it, did the paint scheme actually help at all? Actually, yes. But only at low level. But it's sand combined with woodland. I know we're going to see it on. what? Dirt and grass, yeah. Center line fuel tank, 6 GBU-12 uh, gravity lungs, and nothing else. Although, if we can go back for a second. Um, yeah, it is worth knowing these are Air Force variants of the Air Force. You want to see Lacto's hill hook? So these would have taken off from bases more than likely in Japan? Um, Japan in some cases, or in South Vietnam. Like uh, Saigon. Mm -hmm. Tansen Nuit. Oh, and fun fact for y'all. Um, Tansen Nuit Air Base is now Tansen Nuit International Airport in Ho Chi Minh City. Now, the, this, this picture is warranted here because the Navy and the Air Force both were the only demonstration teams to use the F-4. Um, the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds both flew F-4 Phantom J's, diggerings. So, McNamara's plan actually came to fruition. Oh yeah, long after he left office. For once. Only one time. Only once. Every other concept and harebrained idea he had fell through. Well, in the defense of harebrained ideas, doesn't America run on it in the military? Oh yeah. I mean, we are talking about the same people that made pigeon bombs in World War II. Yeah, but that's a different topic. <laughs> now this is the plane we were talking about. This was the F-4's chief nemesis in Vietnam. 
This is the legendary McQueen Gurevich MiG-21 fish bed. Now, a fish bed is not its actual name. The real name is something I can't pronounce to save my life. But fish bed was a NATO reporting name. Mostly because the Americans wanted to name it something insulting so they wouldn't get to see how it sat yeah, um, sounded compared to our names. F-A-G-O-T, I can't see that in YouTube, but yeah. Um, Basically the Fajot, right? We can say Fajot, but they, they meant yeah. some, yeah. Um, Fulcrum was the most positive one we can think of. Um, they had the Frogfoot. Frogfoot, Flanker, Flanker D, simply D during the Flanker. Um, and of course, um, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm, my mind's running a blank, but there well, was a half dozen other ones. Well, then you had the Yaks and the... Yeah. Well, the Yaks ones, uh, Yaks and Spermola, they went out of style in the Korean War. Yeah. But anyway, we can probably do a whole special on Russian Oh, we can. Right? I'm sure we will at one point, too. If you request it, seriously, planes by request. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so, as you can see here, um, I've seen the obvious right off the bat. This is a Navy uh, F-4 from... Um, That's Okinawa race, isn't it? No, this is from USS Coral Sea. Well, it I'm just USS noticing Coral it because sea. of the, uh, the Rising Sun tail. No, that's the squadron insignia. Mm. This is Sun Oh, uh, okay. Um, I believe it's VF-211. But yes, uh, it has the, the squadron has its roots in, in World War II. Because they were the first squadron to actually become aces in shooting down Japanese, Japanese planes. And they named themselves the Sundowners because they made the rising sun go down. And it's got the shark nose. That was just for your inspiring yeah, yeah. effect. And since it's navy, there's the tail hook. Yep. Tail hook right here. Um, it's canted to the sides. This is the underside of the uh, little fin right here. But this is the tail hook right here. And you can see, this is what I was going to point out originally, it's downward slope of 45 degrees. You can tell that dive bombing has still not gone out of style. But these are all probably GB-12, GBU-12 uh, gravity, bomb, gravity bomb units. So is this probably a picture from linebacker or linebacker 2? No, those are using VCQs. Hmm. Massive B-52 strata fortresses. This is simply another of the countless iterations of pinpoint precision carbon bombing by fire bombers. But they use gravity bombs. Yeah. Which means it had as much of an accuracy as bombing of Tokyo. Mm hmm. Or Dresden. Mm hmm. Which is why there is road to dive bombing. Only in this case, since they're in a supersonic jet, they had to pull out a lot sooner. And they also had to avoid the um, surface to air missiles and what it probably passes for AA guns. Which but, were, um, what, this, Zunis? Um, that, and they also had early iterations of the um, S-200 and S-250 borderline S-300 surface air missile system. Delivered by the Soviet Union. Those would be Tunguskas or something? Um, modeled off the Tunguska. Um, they were very early iterations of very accurate surface air missile systems. And you so, can see the Rio and the pilots. The, the Rio in this case functions also as a bombardier. The Rio, right? Early Rios? That's what we just said. Ah. Now here we have part of the evidence of the end result of the, the, the Tet Offensive. Ah, yes, Tet. Which, as we know, is sort of like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's all rolled into one for the Vietnamese. Completely with backstabbing. I mean, what? Well, it wasn't really backstabbing. I mean, we assumed. Ooh. Got actually a couple questions from Kelly. Oh. Uh, or a couple comments, I should say. Love how they address the issue of stability. Needs a dihedral? Can't change the root of the wound without completely redesigning the jet and tanks, gear mounting, and hard points. They just took the outboard section and angled it twice the necessary amount so that the effective dihedral was the correct amount. 
Yeah, pretty much. It's like, that's exactly it. Very good call, Kelly. That's very accurate. That's exactly what they did. Um, basically, that enabled it, the addition of that heat roll, and that allowed the wing to, wing to function for the aircraft, much like the SVD Dauntless did in World War II. And it enables it to have a very low cell speed. We're talking maybe 100 kilometers an hour. So it could dance. It could dance at low altitude and low speed. Now, it's incredibly vulnerable at low speed, but it enables it to pretty much dive bomb. Now, this is the inside of the cockpit. This that is, is cramped and full of stuff. And this is the pilot cockpit, the real set right behind. Um, now you can see the uh, beginning of pull up the, the ejection sheet, seat right here, um, the flight control stick here, and the pretty much every type of analog sensor you can think of here. Now um, you also see the um, weapon, con weapon control systems on the side here, on the right side, and the ammo loadouts, fuel ailerons all the standard aviation stuff on the right panel. I know aviation stuff is not the pinnacle of professional speak, but I'm just kind of like giving you a rough overview here. And this panel gave you a readout of everything that was going on with your aircraft in flight. They want to see what the joystick looks like. <laughs> this is actually, now this is a gamer joystick. This is modeled after the F4. It's actually very, very accurate. So you have that right here. Now, contrary to what gamers seem to think, um, the stick does not make your plane just go. That requires the foot pedals and everything else. Now, this is the portal assembly. Hmm. Pretty accurate, actually. That makes it zoom. The other one makes it turn. Yes. But generally speaking, you're going to control the throttle like you control any aircraft with your feet, with pedal, foot pedals, and you're going to open up the throttle and, control, and contract it with the throttle control itself. You're going to control the rudder, I should say, with your feet. Now you control everything else, like rolling, yawing, pitching with control stick, and you're going to control the actual aiming of weapons while your rear control set. Literally. But, like, for instance, once they got their guns, that's where you would pull the trigger, right? No, the trigger actually controls landing hey, some gear. some people don't know this. We're doing this for people who don't know. Well, if people don't know this, they wouldn't tune into this in the first place. We're also trying to get newbies involved. But, yes, generally speaking, the um, gun culmination of the F-4 had an M61 A2 Vulcan cannon. Um, was really 20 millimeters and it had about 200 to 300 rounds of ammunition in total. Now, by contrast, this was the cockpit of MiG 21 fish bed. And take the rust off, and it's actually pre uh, pretty fairly new. It's, MiG 21 is still fun today in many former Soviet countries. How much you want to bet most of this is actually what the planes in the U that are flying against Ukraine look like on the inside? <laughs> So you have the main flight control stick here. You're not turning the pedals down here. Um, unlike the F4, this is a single seater in most cases. I think there's one iteration of the F21 that has two seater, though, but I think that's mainly for training. And then there is the uh, yeah, I can't read Russian, but a lot of this is the same as is pretty much in the F4. Also. Um Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know they cover this in some of our aircraft accident things that we watch. Doesn't the Horizon uh, part, isn't it different on the two? Uh, yes, they're actually, um, they're both analog, that's the only real similarity. Um, the artificial Horizon, or AH, this on the uh, NATO version has a, a brown for ground, here too. Black here, but in reality it's brown. With blue sky. Somewhat is blue. And that's the only real similarity. Now this has been upgraded a lot of new tech. 
So this is likely a um, converted MiG-21. Um, the Obsidian Jaguar actually threw in a thing. Uh, fun fact, the Soviets chose that color green as research led them to conclude that it was the most relaxing color. Well, how do you like that? Turns out Soviets actually care for... No, they just wanted them to care inside the cockpit so they could be relaxed until they had to kill. That's true, yeah. And I, I'm guessing this is just a theory. They chose it because it wasn't the red of the park. No, oh, they chose because red had already been taken. They wanted to color it and taken already. But anyway. And this is actually, I'm sure it shows it differently on your screens, but this is actually more of a turquoise. Well, it's probably also been faded quite a while, so even if it was dark, a darker green, I mean, you can tell how much a lot of this has been used. Yeah. Like, it looks like some of the leather actually has been worn off on the throttle, on the stick. Oh, yeah. Well, because pilots also wear gloves, but the friction and contact, constant contact between the glove and the stick actually wears it down. Mm -hmm. So this is the rear of the 21 showing off their J-74 equivalent of the engine. Um, it actually had a speed of roughly 0.02 to 0.2 Mach faster than the F-4, so it could actually realistically catch up with the F-4 in due time. Um, and it was more more agile too, but only at high altitudes again. At a low altitudes, the F-4 had the advantage overall. Isn't that showing it during an engine replacement? Yes. Because <laughs> part of the engine was out there, and this one's the replacement going in. That is a chunky boy. Yeah. So this was the very first prototype of Phantom II, but unlike most prototypes that should be kept on the mainland for testing, this was shipped out to the carrier for prototype testing and evaluation by the Navy's VF-174 test squadron. It doesn't exist anymore. It's in conversion of squadron. But back then it was the VF-174 test evaluation squadron. The Air Force is their equivalent too, but this is Navy, and the Navy never did anything wrong. Well, I mean, we could go into a whole discussion about the USS Forrestal with the F-4 Phantoms that had problems, <laughs> and that we started the Gulf of Tonkin incident. What? The U.S. started? I think the U.S. never start that. So here we have a MiG-21 parked um, this museum piece. Obviously, um, it's been largely demilitarized as it should be for museum piece. But you can see the gun pods on the wings. Is that a gun pod or is that a rocket system? Um, oh no, you're right. That's the rocket system. Because there's small 20 millimeter rockets that would be. Yeah, that was the Zunis, wasn't it? Um, no. Or these, whatever the. These were land base. Right. But this was only for air ground, because it was the primary fuel tank, external fuel pod, yeah. really. Isn't that the same type of rocket pods they use on our Heinz? Um, yeah, they were around the same time, so, yeah. And, and then, that might be the green obsidian was talking about. Yeah. Um, and the tin was mounted on the other side on the empty carriage, right over here. Also, that has a very big air intake. It seems like birds would get caught in that. But surprisingly, they didn't. Hmm? Surprisingly, they didn't. Well, here's the question. Did they even have any birds in Russia? <laughs> of course they have birds in Russia. All birds are Soviets. So these are between ones currently in service. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Look yeah. at the red around the nose cone. It's closed. Because during a during maintenance cycle. Mm. Wait, it's in maintenance even with all the weapon all the missiles still on? Pre-flight maintenance. Oh, pre -flight. Um, this is in the uh, Republic of Latvia at the time. Is that Latvia or was it Italy? That'd be Estonia actually. Oh. Italy is an NATO nation. That's right, yeah. This is really has a fascist um, government now. Well, this was way back when. No, this is like only a few years ago. Yeah. It's so modern. You can't help this picture? It's so modern. And this was 
taken during the 1980s, the late 80s, about 89 or so, the uh, West German uh, Republic, which is now Germany, because West Germany took over East Germany when they had reunification. Um, now these are largely uh, non-combat models, these are RF-4s. You can see because they have massive four external fuel tanks, vastly extending their range. So they were probably dinking around and loitering over East Germany? Um, no, because that would be an act of war. Loitering around the border. No, this is actually taken at 38,000 feet over um, Kuwait. Oh, okay, oh, okay. They were. So it was the 90s. Um, 1989, which is the preliminary pre build of, of the shield. Okay. Uh, according to Jan, those are F4Fs. Uh, yeah, those are F4Fs. Hmm? RF or Fs. Yes, yeah. they have no missiles on them whatsoever. Yeah. So yeah. Reconnaissance four Fs. So I know it's a bit grainy, but here we have a live combat picture, obviously refueling, of Iranian F four. During the Iran Iraq War of the eighties. And like you said, this was during the time with the Shah, when we were friendly, so they were... No, 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 this was, they were delivered before the fall of the Shah, but this is during the iran Iraq War. Mm. When the Shah had already fallen. Oh, hold on a second. Gun under the nose. It's not a gun. This is an ECM mark. These are six 3-inch pylon, um, GBU-12, maybe GBU-16s, or the Iranian equivalent, and two external fuel pods. Um, alright, so... Alright, and the big ones are fuel tanks? I just said they were fuel pods. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. And these are the uh, perennial um, F4s of or F or EJs, uh, the JSEF, Japan Air Self Defense Force. We still don't know all the technical specs of the um, F or EJs, especially F or EJ Kai's. Um, they then were always drawn from the service completely now, but with the exception of some training units. But we still don't have the exact technical specifications at this moment. Government of Japan has not released them. Um, this one. This one, MiG 21. Um, currently in service and unarmed, obviously, with empty pylons. Um, it's probably an air show fighter. This was at the Paris Air Show back in the early 80s. Going at subsonic speeds. This one's been fully updated and upgraded, you can see with the reflections in the cockpit. And we will end on that note. Um, this is the Marine variant again, the VM VMFA 314, which is still in existence by the way, it flies F 35Bs. So that's all I have for you right now. Next week we will be doing another fighter. Um, or we might do some of the aircraft and directions a bit. In the meantime, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Rook in the Air. I also have a link to Instagram and, and um, Facebook page. And my official page as well. At, through Squarespace, that's Rook in the Air Travel. That's Squarespace. I'm sorry. Rook in the Air Travel slash Squarespace.com. And I have that tagged on my YouTube channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the air. I love you all.